All right, so just because I know Ed in a past life had to be a black man, I got him a gift. Should I open it? Ah! <laughs> no, oh, come on, Ed, show him. <laughs> Ed won't touch a cotton ball. <laughs> Everybody's making reference to Ed, and I figured I got a lot. I need a long piece of paper. I need a lot, and it's, it's a lot of shit. So I wrote all my notes down for Ed. I was told I had 10 minutes, so I tried to limit it to two sheets. Oh, uh, look at oh, look, it says "Happy Birthday, Ed" on there. There you go. I just wrote bullet points. Um, we all know the waiting for Ed. Everyone ever talk about it. Waiting for Ed. Waiting for Ed. You know, I suffer from CPT. I'm sure Tina knows what I'm talking about. That's called colored people's time. Yeah. The great thing about CPT is usually always within 15 minutes. Now. I told Mike that I would not eliminate him from this when I was up here today, because I know Mike Decker and I love you. And I love you, Mom Decker. How you doing? <laughs> and don't worry, Mike. I work with you at nights many times, and I understand why we're here late. It's no problem, because you and your brother suffer from DT, which is way more powerful than CPT. Because DT, Decker time, <laughs> is always subject to change. You can't lock that bad boy in. You go, hey, Ed, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Can you give me 20? <laughs> okay, Ed, I'll give you 20. Hey, Ed, I'm outside. I need 10. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'm going to go get some coffee. I'll be back. Hey, can you give me 10 more? You're like, what the fuck is that, Ed? We said 5 o'clock. It's 6.15. <laughs> the show is over. We're, we're not going to be there. It's okay. They'll wait. Decker time. You gotta love that stuff. <laughs> Me and Ed go way back. You wouldn't know it from looking at him now. And you, you wouldn't know it from looking at him now. But me and Ed used to play a lot of basketball together. <laughs> Up at the Claremont Rec. Right? This, this, I didn't even know Mike then. We used to, this is Ed. This is how Ed used to treat me. We'd get in Ed's Jeep. Hey, we're going to go up to Claremont Rec play ball. Right. Okay, great. Hey, I got stopped by my brothers. Okay, great. Hey, why don't you sit in the Jeep? Now, let me just tell you now. Ed rolls up to these line of apartment complexes, these long ones in, in Claremont, parks in the back where there's nothing, nothing back. You know, the back is a canyon and nothing. Fence. Ed runs inside to see his brother Mike. Half an hour later, I'm sitting in the truck, Jeep going, what the fuck? You know, what's he doing up there? 45 minutes later, I'm going, damn, dude, you know, I'm not going to have time to play any basketball. An hour later, Ed comes out. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot you were out here. Yeah, you did. You left me on the Jeep a couple times. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I was talking with my brother. I decided to call my mom. Sorry. But that's cool because... You know, playing basketball, it's pretty much accepted white men can't jump. I got that. No problem. But Ed didn't want to jump. Ed didn't want to run. Ed didn't want to pass. Ed didn't want to do anything but shoot. It's like you jam in there, you get a rebound, you turn around, Ed's all the way down at the other end of the court going, throw me the ball. And, you, and you're like, this is some bullshit. Wait a minute. So... You throw Ed the ball, and you go, you go, hey, all right, I'm going to throw Ed the ball. Now, it's also pretty much accepted that if you got the white guy on your team who can't run, can't jump, won't rebound, don't defend, that he's at least going to be a lights-out shooter. It's okay, Ed. I didn't have a car, so I needed a ride to the gym. <laughs> 